I'll be totally honest, with the amount of kit that comes through our office and workshop doors each and every year, trying to pin down my favorite product from the last 12 months isn't easy. So before I change my mind again, my gear of the year for 2022 is the RockShox Zeb Ultimate Fork. There's a bit of me that's reluctant to select a product that costs as much as the Zeb Ultimate Fork. Yes, these are pricey at £1,119 or $1,159, but I think it's fair to say that RockShox have done a sterling job with the latest Zeb. A serious amount of work has gone into creating the new Charger 3 damper, which features in the latest Zeb, Lyric and Pike forks. It features a coil spring backed internal floating piston along with two new high and low speed valving assemblies which are said to be the key to keeping the two compression adjustments totally separate. Then there's the new buttercup technology designed to reduce high frequency vibrations, pressure relief valves and the entirely new Debonair Plus air spring. Sure, there's lots of acronyms and buzzwords within that lot but as ever, what I really care about is how these things translate on the trail. As you no doubt guessed by their inclusion, the Zeb Ultimates don't disappoint when you're on the hill. The first thing of note is just how quiet this new fork is. Thanks to how RockShox control the oil during the rebound stroke of the fork, there's none of that wheezing or gurgling going on as they extend back to full travel after a big hit. More important for me though, is that I can now use the adjusters more effectively to tune exactly how I want the fork to feel. While it's true I still keep the rebound adjuster wound fully open, I'm now able to fiddle with the low and high speed compression adjusters far more than I did on the previous fork. It feels like RockShox have shifted the adjustment window somewhat for 2023, making it more useful for lighter riders like me at 68 kilos. I've enjoyed being able to make some meaningful changes to the fork setup as conditions over the year have changed or when shifting from high paced tracks to slow and technical trails. What really cemented the Zeb Ultima as my top pick for 2022 was just how well they performed while I was racing the Stone King Rally. The brutal nature of the terrain coupled with the unsighted full pelt racing meant that bikes were really being put through the ringer. Time and time again, I was consistently surprised with just how capable the Zeb Ultima felt. Supple and forgiving when you needed to try and find traction on loose alpine trails, but never lacking support when the bike needed to be propped up and pinged from line to line in a split second. For those times alone, this fork deserves serious amounts of praise. Brought back in the late 2000s and used almost every day since, my trusty Park Tool PCS9 workstand is a true performer. The entry level stand lived in the back of my van, traveling week in, week out to different remote hillsides across the continent to perform its duty of holding my battered bikes, always without fault. Multiple countries later, after several house moves and nearly 15 years in use, my original PCS9 still stands strong in my garage its jaws open and ready to dutifully clamp its next bike. Searching for the PCS9 online now reveals a three generation family tree. It was first replaced by the PCS 9.2 and now the most up to date PCS 9.3. The Bike Radar contributor Vicky Balfour awarded four out of five stars in her review. Each iteration has been refined with the current 9.3 looking significantly more premium than the rather Spartan 9 I still use to this date. With that refinement, costs has also increased. The 9.3 now has a suggested RRP of £284.99p. I personally remember paying no more than 80 quid for the original version, although that was a lot of cash for a budget-focused youth bike racer. Reminiscing aside, the simple functionality of the PCS9 is its main draw, and the reason why it's lasted so long. The clamping jaws fasten using a bolt and nut, a system that's almost impossible to break, and the clamp's rotation function is just as simple. Its legs and upright portion are robust, made from metal tubes akin to scaffolding poles in both weight and feel. In this sense, they're almost impossible to break. While the stand used to support 20 kilogram downhill bikes of old, it's more than robust enough to stare headlong into the eyes of a 28 kilo electric mountain bike. Whether it's holding bikes I'm working on with my aging set of tools, or I just need to hold a bike in place while I give it a post-ride wash, the PCS9's performance is steadfast. I'm not looking to replace it, and I don't expect it to break. However, if I was in the market for a new workstand, the 
PCS 9.3 would be high up on my list. Its older, less refined version's performance is anything to go by. In the summer of 2022, after nine years of content creation, I was fortunate to take a 12-week sabbatical from Bike Radar and MBUK. With bikes running through my veins, it should be no surprise that I spent the bulk of that on two wheels, with the centrepiece being a six-week gravel riding bike packing trip. Needless to say, there was no way I could afford six weeks worth of B&Bs or hotels, so I strapped some bags to my old Lauf True Grit long-term bike, purchased some thoroughly researched camping kit and started pedalling. It had been the best part of 15 years since I last purchased a tent, and so my mind was blown by the plethora of options on the market. I had hazy memories of a solo cycling trip in New Zealand 18 years previously, where I was hemmed into a one-person tent for five weeks, constantly battling the competing spatial needs of my sleeping equipment, clothing, kit, and myself. As a result, I decided I wanted to take a two-person tent to give myself a little extra breathing room. As fast and light was my packing ethos, I wanted to keep the roof over my head to well under two kilograms. I also wanted to make sure that there was suitable vestibule space so any dirty shoes or unwashed pots could stay outside. I also wanted some smart bike packy features such as helmet storage loops and on-bar stuff sack, decent interior pockets and a subtle colour that would help with stealthy wild camping. As it turns out, the unsnappily named Big Agnes Copper Spur HV UL2 bike pack ticks all those boxes. It's light, it's kind of green, has a multitude of pockets, including multimedia friendly roof pockets, features short poles that contribute to a compact package that sits nicely between the drops, two vestibules and internal architecture that genuinely means I can sit up inside without having to contort my body. When you imagine a long bike packing trip, you tend to visualize long days in the saddle, followed by cozy nights in your tent, whiling away reading some of the best cycling books around. What one might not consider are the copious hours sat at either end of the day, either drumming up the energy to climb back on the bike or trying to digest as many calories as you can stuff into your face. For this, I decided I didn't want to sit on the ground. This was my actual real luxury on my bike packing trip a camping chair that weighed 500 grams. 500 grams is the same weight as a small bottle of water, but by heck did that little stuff sack of comfort repay every gram of effort it took to lug up each of the 45,000 meters of climbing I did on my trip. Unfold, clip into place, drape over and secure, and there you go, a camping chair fit for a king, or at least a very tired Tom. It was very expensive, but life's too short to sit on the floor for six weeks. The lever is often the Achilles heel to a dropper post assembly and Wolftooth simply named Remote Dropper Lever has proven a transformatory upgrade for my Norco Optic. I'm seriously impressed with the lever feel and construction. It's compatible with all cable actuated dropper posts and the remote allows the cable head to be housed at either end. It proved remarkably easy to install. The remote's lever uses a textured grip and a 21mm sealed cartridge bearing a silky smooth action. Crucially, there isn't an ounce of play, which is something you'll find on the majority of levers. There's a machined path for the cable routing, which extends to the custom pinch bolt to clamp the cable to prevent any damage. Even the barrel adjuster is well designed and offers a satisfyingly smooth action. I've luckily not had to test this feature out yet, and I hope I never will, but Wolftooth says it has engineered a failure point, allowing the lever to break away from its base in the event of a crash. Wolftooth manufactures clamps to work with all brakes, but as I like to run my dropper lever further towards the stem than the brake lever, I've just opted for the 22.2mm hinge clamp option. At £87 or $83.99, it's one of the pricier aftermarket levers on the market, but given the lever feel and robust construction, I think it's worth the cost. After all, like your shift or brake lever, it's going to be a place you spend a fair amount of time in when riding. My gear of the year for 2022 is unsurprisingly a camera. And before you jump to any conclusions, it is not a GoPro. It is in fact the Insta360 ONE RS, specifically with its 360 lens and chest mount. Not only does this camera's video quality leave me satisfied at every turn, 
but its modular body design, GoPro mounting options, 360 lens and Insta360 Studio app make using this camera an absolute joy. I'll be talking more about the 360 lens for the rest of this segment, so if you want to know more about the Insta360 in general, then you have to check out our video where I put it head to head with GoPro's Hero 10. The link for that one is in the video description. The 360 lens brings a new level of creativity when it comes to filming with the One RS, allowing me to shoot now and ask questions later. The app is entirely intuitive too, letting me reframe my shot as I make my way down the trail. Barrel distortion, or the fisheye effect, is something that is well known to action cam users, and this is an issue that GoPro has been addressing since day one. In fact, they've done a pretty good job at reducing its effects on its more modern hero cameras. However, I have actually found that I'm really enjoying the fisheye style setup when using the 360 lens on the One RS, specifically while having it mounted to my chest. And while this effect can be negated somewhat in the editing process, I like to leave it as it is. This is because it seems to give a better sense of speed and, in my opinion, does a much better job of giving the audience a realistic experience. Reviewing the footage makes me feel like I'm riding the trail all over again. Not to mention the horizon levelling stops me from falling off my chair when navigating those tricky corners during playback. If any action camera users are out there and want to change from the standard setup, then I would really recommend this camera and lens combo. You can grab the Insta360 ONE RS Twin Edition pack for £499.99 or $549.99. This pack includes the body, battery, mounting cage, 360 lens and 4K boost lens. You can also get a standalone kit, however this only comes with the 4K boost lens. My first pick is an absolute go-to for me and was a complete surprise. The other is just a great idea, well executed. Product number one is a pair of gyro latch flat pedal shoes. They surprised me as I already had favourite shoes from larger footwear specific brands and wrongly hadn't given much thought to gyro shoes. Why do I love the latch so much? Well firstly, the styling is casual for a riding shoe and they don't look out of place at the skate park or even down the pub. You're never overdressed in the latch. Second is that they are super comfortable. Slide them on and they're cosseting and supportive. You don't even notice you're wearing them. And finally, and most importantly, the sole. Slipping off your pedals is at best a horrible feeling and an inconvenience, and at worst you can smash your private parts or have a big accident. The sole on the latch strikes an ideal balance between support and suppleness. There's enough resistance that your foot doesn't fold around the pedal, but enough compliance to generate good levels of grip. They aren't as tenacious in sticking to your pedals as 510 Stealth Rubber or Ride Concepts Rubber Kinetics, but crucially they are easy to adjust on the pedals, which is perfect for fun rides out with friends or are more concerned about pulling tricks and drifting corners than getting Strava KOMs. They retail for £129.99 or $150 US dollars, but can be found cheaper online. Product number two is the Physique Alpaca Tool Carrier. It bolts on under their Alpaca Terra or Alpaca Gravita saddles and it's simply a great piece of design. It's squirrelled away where it can't snag on anything and the collection of equipment stored inside means you have most trailside emergencies covered. Secured in the central pouch is a 12 function multi-tool with Allen keys from 2 to 8 mm, T10 and T25 torque wrenches and two screwdrivers. But most cleverly, it also doubles as an inflator. In the side pouches of the Alpaca tool carrier, is space for two removable 16 gram CO2 cartridges. I only run one CO2 cartridge, instead choosing a Nuke Proof Horizon CO2 style tubeless repair kit, which includes 10 plugs and retails for £19.99. And I fit that in the other side. This means I'm carrying everything I could need to fix a puncture securely and in one place. Weight for the saddle and carrier with tool, but without the CO2 cartridges is 374 grams which isn't significant if you're planning on carrying significant equipment separately anyway. The compact and robust nature of this setup means it's a winner for me. Retail price is £39.99 for the tool carrier and multi-tool, and the accompanying saddles are £89.99 for the Terra and £79.99 for the Gravita saddle. 